Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you could use Luminar to convert and process an image into black and white. You could start out with an image that looks like this and end up with an image that looks like this. What I'm going to be doing today will work in Luminar 2018, Luminar 3, and Luminar Flex. I am using Luminar 3 for this demonstration. I chose this image to work on because it's a very average looking color image, but I think it will be a quite compelling black and white image. Now, when you do a conversion and process of a black and white image in Luminar, there's a couple different ways you could go about doing it. Many photographers like to convert to black and white right away, and then process their image from that point forward. Other photographers do some processing and then somewhere along their workflow, convert the image into black and white. Personally, I like to convert my image to black and white right away, unless I'm using Luminar, and I'll explain why in a moment. But with Luminar, I prefer to do some processing first, then convert to black and white. So, I'm in the edit panel. I'm gonna click on add filter. And I'm going to add the raw develop filter. Now this is a raw file. If you're not working on a raw file, if you're working on a JPEG or a TIFF, this will just be called develop. It's the same thing. So I'm going to start with that, close down the filters catalog. And I'm going to start right at the top and choose the profile first. And I recommend that you choose your profile right away because the different profiles will affect the tone and the contrast of the image. So if you come in and just adjust tone, contrast, exposure first, then go up and pick a profile, it's going to make all those adjustments irrelevant. You're going to have to go back and readjust them anyway. So for this demonstration, I'll stay with the Luminar default profile for now. Next, for most images, color images specifically, I recommend you do white balance right away. But you may think that white balance really doesn't matter for black and white, but it actually does. Um, you'll notice, and I'll demonstrate in a moment once we convert this to black and white, that black and or that white balance does make a difference. So I'm going to leave it as is for now. Now, as far as the image itself, as I look at it, uh, the shadows are a little dark. It's it's vignetted quite badly. Um, I used a very wide angle lens, like a 14 millimeter lens and an ND filter. So you can see it as a strong vignette. If you're interested in all the gear, the settings and the exposure information, all that will be listed in the description below the video. So check that out and you'll get an idea of what I used and how I shot this image. Now looking at it, it is a little dark. I'm going to go to the shadows right away and open those up. So I'm going to turn those all the way up just to really open up the shadows. And there isn't much detail in the sky, but I do want to bring out any detail that is there. So I'm going to go to highlights and bring those down a little bit. So just to try to bring out a little bit more detail in the sky. I'm going to get a white and black point next. I'm going to hold the Alter Option key in. It's Alt if you have PC option and if you have a Mac. And I'm not sure this works with a PC yet. It only, as far as I know, is still working with a Mac. But if you own a PC and this does work, in the comments below mention that it does work. So I'm going to click on the whites slider and what I'm talking about working is that when I click on this, the entire screen turns black. I'm going to move the whites slider to the right and you'll start to see some colors coming through red, green, and blue. Eventually you'll see a little white coming through. Where the white's coming through, that means I'm clipping all three channels. The colors mean I'm clipping those color channels. Personally, I don't like to clip any of the highlights, so I will pull whites all the way down until all those colors just disappear. To me, that's a perfect black or a perfect white point for what I like to do. Everyone's different. You may not want to adjust yours that way. I'm going to again hold in that alter option key and click on the blacks slider. This time the screen turns uh, white. And as I move it to the left, you'll see green, red, and eventually blue come through and eventually black come through. Of course, when you see that red, green, and blue, that means I'm I'm clipping those color channels. When I see black, that means I'm clipping all three color channels. Now, personally, I like to clip the shadows a little bit. So I'm going to leave it so I have some black there and some of the green and a little bit of the other channels as well. For me, having some absolute black in the image, in my opinion, gives my image a lot of tonal depth. So I have black 
all the way up to almost white. And I think for me, that works. Everyone's a little different. See what works best for you. Now, I'm not going to do anything with exposure or contrast or clarity here. I think exposure is fine. And I'm going to use other filters that will do contrast and clarity, like effects to the image. One thing about Luminar you have to be careful with is that there's so many different filters, like 52 filters. And when you come in and adjust clarity, let's say, with one filter, and then you adjust another filter that, even though it might not say clarity, it's doing a clarity-like adjustment to your image. Then you might pick a third filter that's doing say, detail. And all that kind of builds up. And when you get to the end, it just is overwhelmingly uh, detailed or, or sharp. And you got to be careful. So I'm not going to do it here. I could always come back in here and readjust. So I'm going to click on Add Filter, and I'm going to convert it to black and white now. So I'm going to go to black and white conversion. And with the black and white conversion filter, you'll notice it has exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, and also has a detail slider. So you could have skipped the raw develop um, filter. But the reason why I don't skip the raw develop filter is because of a lens tab. Click on that Lens tab, and I want to get rid of Lens Distortion, Chromatic Aberration. I want to defringe the image. Also for this image, as I mentioned, it was at 14 millimeters with a really kind of wonky ND filter on it. And you'll, When you go to look at the description, you see the equipment I used. You'll notice that that is a very unusual ND filter, and it is heavily vignetted. So I want to de-vignette it. So I'm just going to pull that all the way up, I think, let it render, and you can see why I didn't have to adjust exposure. The image was just really heavily vignetted. So I took care of that. So I'm really completely done with the raw develop module, except I do want to show you white balance. Remember I mentioned white balance will affect the black and white image. Watch, I'll go to temperature and I'll turn that to the right. Go to the left. You can see how it affects the black and white image. So white balance is something you might want to adjust as well after you apply your black and white conversion filter. But with the black and white conversion filter, you do have a lot of control. You'll notice, I mentioned you have those tone sliders down there along with clarity, details, contrast, and exposure. But you have these color sliders here. The color sliders allow you to adjust the luminance value of whatever was in the color image, meaning we know there was blue in the sky, right? So I could go to the blue slider when I'm in the luminance tab and pull the blue down. And you'll notice I'm making the sky darker. So you could target a specific color that was in the scene and affect the tone of that specific color. If you don't want to come in and just manually move these sliders around to affect the tone in your image, what you can do is go across the top and we have these little color circles. These are presets. And when you click on one, you'll see that it will automatically adjust the sliders to something. And what is it doing? Well, it's emulating film and a filter. So if you shot black and white film on your, in your camera and you put this specific color filter on the lens, this is the way it would affect the colors in the scene. Similarly, you could go down and just click on one and each one in turn and see which one you might like the better. You can see that one's blowing out the blue sky. Well, I'll go right here. I like that first one. I think that kind of did a pretty cool job. And I will kind of take a look a little bit of clarity here. Maybe just add a tiny bit of clarity. I don't think I'm going to add any detail. You can see how that really kind of overdoes it. One thing I should add is I turn up detail. You can see it looks kind of noisy in the sky. We do have those look like sensor spots. Those are really water drops. It was very windy, as you can tell by looking at the water. And the wind was just blowing water drops on my lens. And I'm going to take care of those near the end. So I will then. But as I do it, you can see there's a little bit of noise up in there. Uh, typically, I do like to get rid of noise right away, like early in my workflow, and I would uh, choose the noise reduction uh, filter. But for black and white, sometimes I like that little bit of noise there. I think it's a nice effect. Now, when I turn detail back down by double-clicking on the word details to reset it, it, it's not noticeable anyway. But I just wanted to mention that, that typically do noise reduction early in your workflow, you'll, say it, you'll see that it will be more effective. If you try to do noise reduction at the end, after you added all the clarity and detail and all this different contrast, it will be more difficult to get rid of the noise. So do it early in the workflow. I'm not going to do it at all in this image, for this image. So um, I kind of like what I did here. 
Now there's a saturation tab. This is if you're doing selective color. For instance, if you want the blue sky to be blue, move that to the right and you can see it's gonna allow blue to come through. Um, if you want the grass to be colored, you can push green and yellow to the right and start getting some color over there. So if you wanna do selective color, that's where you would go to that saturation tab. But most often, if you're just doing a straight black and white, you're not going to move those at all. You're just going to move the luminance sliders of those colors. So I'm done with the black and white conversion um, part. I'm happy now with everything I've done in the raw develop. I readjusted the temperature and tint to give me an image I'm, I'm kind of happy with. So from this point now, let's uh, add another filter, and I think I will work with detail now. So I'm going to go down to the Details Enhancer. And uh, again, there's so many different filters you could choose to add detail, clarity. You don't have to do any at all if you wanted to add detail with this slider, clarity with either of those two sliders. But for here, I do want to go to the large slider and move that to the right a little. Let's see, it's just adding a bit of subtle detail and maybe the medium a little. I don't want to add any small detail. I think that kind of just makes it a little bit too over the top. So I just, I just want to be more subtle with this. So I like that so far. I'm going to go to the Add Filter, and I'm going to go to the Dramatic Filter. Even though this is most often used for color images, I think you'll see that on a black and white image, it does look pretty cool. So I'm just going to turn them out up. You can see as I turn it up, it adds a little more drama to that sky. Of course, when I click down, it kind of darkens the image temporarily, so it's kind of hard. So I want to be careful I don't overdo it, though. To me, my style is a little more subtle. I don't want those really dramatic black and white images usually, you know, with like high contrast and whatnot. I know those often look really good. And for some scenes, I may want to use a really dramatic black and white. But I, uh, for this image, I want it more in the middle. Not super subtle, but not super dramatic either. So we'll turn that down a little more. I think that looks pretty decent right there. Now I think I'll deal with these uh, water droplets that are in the sky, and I'll add the vignette at the very end. You know, As you know, I like to add vignettes to my images, even though I just got rid of the vignette. But I like to have it more control of the vignette by doing it myself. So I'm going to get rid of these spots first. So I'm going to go up to Tools, then to the Erase Tool. Now there's a couple bugs in the Erase Tool I want to talk about um, once it prepares the image for the Erase Tool. And I just want to make you aware of them and how you could work around at least the one bug. So once it prepares, it is going a little bit slow today. Um, also, when I run the software to record my screen, it kind of uses up a lot of uh, res resources. So um, whatever program I use to do any post-processing runs a bit slower. Now you can see when we have the erase tool, we have a brush. You could affect the size of the brush with the bracket keys. Right bracket key makes it larger. Left bracket key makes it smaller. And typically for sensor spots or water droplets like this, you'll just get a brush that's bigger than the drop and click once to get rid of it and then go to the next one and click. And one bug is that the second click, sometimes you'll draw a perfectly straight line and it's annoying as heck. And each subsequent click, you'll just keep drawing lines and you don't wanna draw lines usually if you're getting rid of sensor spots. If that happens to you, uh, what you could do is hit Command Z as in Zebra if you have a Mac, Control Z as in Zebra if you have a PC to undo that line then press in the Alt or Option key. Alt if you have PC option. If you have Mac, just press it in and let go. And I found that that will make it stop drawing those crazy straight lines. And let me go through real quick. There's a lot here, so I'm probably going to miss some because it's hard to talk and concentrate at the same time. At least it is for me. Now, the other bug. Um, usually we like to zoom in when we're looking at the sky, trying to find all these little spots and to zoom in when you have the brush tool active, you could hold in the space bar and you'll notice it turns into the magnifying glass. Well, you should be able to click with the left mouse button and zoom in, but you can see it's not allowing me to do it. So that is another bug that is in the application that hopefully, uh, they fix soon. 
So I'm just going to try to do the best I can, and I think that's okay. So I'm going to click. Oh, before I do that, I noticed there was a piece of garbage down here, and I can't zoom in so you to see it, but there is a piece of garbage on the rocks down here, and I want to get rid of that as well. And I'm going to then click on Erase to get rid of them. And I'm not just clicking Done right away. I want to look at it after it does it because I want to make sure it didn't leave like a unsightly circle in the sky. And you can see it did a good job. And it did a good job down here getting rid of that piece of garbage that was down there. So it looks pretty good. So I'm going to click Done. Now it's just going to render this on its own layer. And I'll show you that as soon as it does. Now you look at the layers palette or panel and you'll see the bottom layer is where we have all those filters I added. The top layer is the erased image layer. You can see on the bottom filter we still have the, the water droplets. I click on the erased image layer and you can see all that is gone. Now I'm going at this point add my vignette and finish off my image. So I'm going to click on add filter and click on vignette. Close down the filters catalog. And I could add a lighter vignette. Maybe that would look cool on this image but I think I'll just add the darker one. And I kind of like to, just a subtle one, but so I'll just move the sliders and kind of test and look at the image and see how I like it. And um, I think feathering's right in the middle is fine. So it's a very subtle vignette so far. There's before and there's after you could see. But I am going to add, excuse me, I am going to add a bit of inner light. It takes a second to render. I think it just, the way the wind was blowing straight at me in the sky is, because it was a longer exposure, the sky's kind of blurred out in that uh, way that it looks like it's coming right at me. I think the inner light adds to that. And I think I don't need to place center. I think right in the centers, right where it is, is fine. And I think that's pretty good right there. So, um, you know, really, I pretty much think I'm done. There's our starting image, and there's our final image. So there's before and there's after. And that's how, or at least one way, you could go about uh, converting and adjusting a black and white image in Luminar 3, Luminar 2018, or Luminar Flex. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>